Rows of gingerbread houses and the creek define Menlo Park, a residential hub with 30,000 people. But now, big developments are threatening this idyllic small town atmosphere. Since the 70s, Menlo Park residents have shot down four development plans that try to bring in big developers. But the city's sales tax base has decreased by almost 8% since 2004 after several auto dealerships on El Camino Real folded. The city council is again flirting with the idea of promoting high-density development in these vacant spots and revamping the downtown. It is trying to change the zoning codes and build more offices, houses and large retail spaces along Santa Cruz Avenue and at this abandoned Cadillac dealership on 1300 El Camino Real. But businesses that have been in Menlo for generations fear that their small family-run operations might get crushed by giant retail chains brought in by these developments. I think that there's a, um, always been a, an awful lot of debate regarding whether or not chain stores are truly good for a community. Local businesses generally employ locals at higher rates with more fringe benefits. Philanthropically, local businesses give back more to the local community. But uh, this is one of the biggest reasons why we were very, very much against the approvals of a grocery use of 52,000 square feet at 1300 El Camino Real. The Safeway just increased in the approximately 13,000 square feet. So it would triple the amount of grocery retail square footage in the downtown uh, versus before those two projects were approved. So you have to ask yourself at what point is enough enough. In 2006, Draeger's and Beltramo's wine led a successful campaign that kept Belfmore, a national liquor chain, out of Menlo Park. Beltramo's, which has served the city for almost a century, was trying to expand their retail store when the new construction at 1300 El Camino was announced. Beltramo's fear that this mega office and retail space development in its backyard would increase traffic and poach its customers. The Beltramo's family has suspended their expansion project indefinitely. Business owners complained that the city council was trying to avoid listening to their concerns. Okay, they had a, they had a group. Okay. However, I talked to 50 property owners and no one has ever been approached by any of the people on that group. And I talked to merchants and no one has been approached. I w I'll say that almost every downtown you know, that has some history has people who have helped define the downtowns. And Mark is one of them. He's one of the brand names in town. And he owns the furniture store on Santa Cruz and he's probably one of the premier leaders of the downtown merchants group. And he defined 35, 40 years ago, he helped build the downtown to what it is put a lot of money in. We had a process that we created. We asked each commission to self-select one member. Um, Mark Flegel was not selected by the Chamber of Commerce. We had a different consultant for the first phase, which was the visioning. That was a year-long output. 3,000 people interviewed. And it's the most extensive outreach, you know, public process there's been on anything in town. After a two-year delay, the city is now struggling to complete its downtown vision plan by October 2010. The 1300 El Camino project that was approved in October last year has been sued by an unnamed entity challenging its environmental impact report. How far is Menlo Park willing to take their development wars? Only time will tell. Purnima Virasekara reporting for Silicon Valley Pulse.